So with uh, no further ado, I would like to bring on um, Amanda Bullen and Brian Garcia from Eagle View. Um, and again, I want to thank Eagle View for their support of this event as the, the Zoom sponsors. And I believe we're going to take a brief moment to hear from Robert Locke from Eagle View, uh, live from Rochester. Thank you very much, Steve. And uh, hello, everybody. You know, it's uh, it's a great pleasure for me just to welcome everybody to the uh, the cake session. It's uh, something that's a little different this year. And, uh, you know, at Eagle View, Steve, we've been doing... Uh, or sponsoring the cake for many years. And I've had the pleasure of being out there with you. And unfortunately with the circumstances this year, uh, I couldn't be with you. And I wish I was because uh, it's 28 degrees here. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll take a rain check for next year. But I do wanna thank everybody involved in setting this up, Steve and Christine and Nick. Uh, you know, we've got, we're gonna have some fun with this. Uh, to be honest, in the past, we didn't, uh, we didn't bake the cakes, did we, Amanda? We just, uh, we bought them and uh, brought them and had a lot of fun with it. And I think we actually had to wrestle with some of the other vendors over the years to uh, keep our spot. So I thought this was a creative way to, uh, to do it this year. And I, I want to commend everybody out in LA about the, the great event so far and, and how you've organized this thing in, in what is certainly a, a trying year for everybody. So with that, thanks again for including us. Uh, we're excited to see where uh, Brian and Amanda can take this this afternoon. So Amanda and Brian, it's all yours. Awesome. Oh, thank, thank you, you Bob. So much, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. This is super exciting. I can't wait to see what Amanda Bull and Eagle View's uh, local technical manager has in store for us today. It's going to be some fun stuff. Uh, my name is Brian Garcia. So I'm the Eagle View's local sales rep, um, and I'll be presenting a short session tomorrow uh, at 1130 PST. So if you have some time to stop in and see what Eagle View is all about, uh, I just wanted to plug that session. But just to give you a little background, Amanda and I have been working uh, with uh, and had the pleasure of partnering with LA County uh, and the LARIAC, the regional consortium that's been formed out there uh, for the past 10 years. And so we've formed a great partnership. And through that, it's been a passion of mine and Amanda's uh, to transform and modernize uh, local governments especially in the Southern California region uh, and by utilizing Eagle View's technology. So again, I hope you stop by the session. So before I do hand over the, uh, the mic to the uh, master baker there, Amanda, to take us through the session, uh, I bet you're all wondering what is behind me. So uh, what I want you to do in this chat box, do me a favor, and why don't you guess what we're looking at here in the background? And maybe to give you a hint or two, if you think it's a cake, why don't you tell me how many layers you think it is? All right, Amanda, go ahead and take it away. Okay, guys, we got to bake a cake in 25 minutes. So um, let's get down to business. I know that ingredient list was out there. So we're going to start off. And originally, I was going to double the recipe to make a nice layer cake. But I think so many cakes practicing in the past few days, I'm just going to make the single recipe, but I'll talk you through the ingredients on everything. So first off, we're going to use a half a cup of butter, softening, um, and just so it mixes up a little bit better. So one stick, a normal stick, is going to be a half a cup of butter. Um, it's going to make one nine-inch cake. So if you guys are wanting to do a layer cake or possibly do um, a typical sheet cake, you're going to want to double the recipe. So you're going to want to use two sticks of butter. But for me, I'm just doing a single recipe here. So I'm going to do one stick of butter. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my stand mixer. If you guys do not have a sand mixer at home, um, you can go ahead and use a hand mixer or mix this up by hand. It doesn't really matter. Um, whatever just gets the ingredients combined together so you can get them in the pan and in the oven. And then next, we're gonna take one cup of sugar. And if you guys are using um, or doubling the recipe again, you're gonna use two cups of sugar. That one's an easy conversion. So make sure you have a level cup and go ahead and dump that in the bowl. And keep in mind as we're mixing this stuff up, we're gonna mix our wet and dry ingredients separately and then we're gonna mix them up together. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mixer on and this is gonna cream our sugar and butter. And one really important thing that I forgot, and Brian, I think you've probably already done this, did you preheat your oven? 
Yes, my oven has been on for a while. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> so we're going to want to preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I would recommend, I've baked this cake a couple of times now. Um, I would recommend using, if you have a convection oven, not using the convection bake, just using the traditional bake. The cake seems to come out a little fluffier that way. Um, and there's my pro tip for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cream the butter. And we're going to also want to mix up those dry ingredients. So in order to get those ingredients accurate, we're going to want to use some of our measurement tools because accuracy is going to be really important while we're baking this cake. Hey, Brian, is there anything else you can think of that needs to be super accurate? You know, Amanda, while you mention that, I can't help but think about our technology and how it relates to accuracy and measurements. And uh, if the folks on the line don't know, uh, Eagle View provides uh, LA County and its various partners through the LARIAC program, high resolution imagery, both in your straight down ortho view and also the oblique angle in order for them to be able to make very accurate measurements from their desktop. So accuracy and imagery, accuracy and cake, very important. Um, flour, we're gonna use one and a half cups of flour. Um, for the single recipe, and then three cups of flour for the double recipe. So while I'm doing that, I think, Brian, it looks like you had your stuff mixed up over there. I'm going to go ahead and mute my phone for a second while I turn the mixer on. Was there anything you wanted to add? I think we're good. I guess while you turn on your mixer, I might want to talk to the folks there on the phone or on the line about the LARIAC program. If you're unfamiliar with it, uh, LA County established an aerial consortium there um, and have been capturing um, digital aerial data in many forms, not just aerial imagery, but LIDAR, uh, building representations. Uh, they've done a land cover layer out there um, through this program and they make it available not only to all of the uh, participants there in the county, but also the local municipalities and other jurisdictions such as uh, the uh, Metro Transit Authority, Caltrans and so forth. It's a great program that allows folks to be able to uh, save a lot of money by coming together and uh, leveraging uh, the scales of economy. Awesome, perfect timing. It's time to add the baking powder. So, <laughs> Brian, you look like quite the stuff there. <laughs> With your well, I am a gear, pro. Your baking tool. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to want to do baking powder in this one, guys. Um, baking soda is not going to get you quite as fluffy of a cake, but, you know, if that's all you've got, you can give it a try. I'm sure it'll probably be super tasty. Plus, we're going to decorate it for the contest, so I think that's what's really important. Um, and so for this, we're going to use one and three quarter teaspoons. So teaspoons are the little ones um, for those of you that don't bake. Um, you should have a three quarter teaspoon. Um, if you don't um, use the quarter teaspoon or the half, you know, just get there with the different size teaspoons that you have. Um, so we're going to put that in here with the dry ingredients. And then one other thing that I recommend um, is going ahead and whisking up your dry ingredients to get everything super incorporated. That way, when you're mixing it into your wet ingredients, it mixes consistently. Quick question, Amanda, on the wet ingredients. I might only have butter and sugar right now at this point, or yep, vanilla in yep. there as well. Yeah, we're going to add that next too. So your butter and sugar should be cleaned up, and Brian's using a okay. hand mixer here. Um, and we're going to also next add our vanilla and our eggs to our wet ingredients. And that milk that you see on the ingredient list, hold off on that because we're not going to add that till the very end. Um, so it calls for two teaspoons of vanilla in the single recipe, and then that's going to equate to four teaspoons of vanilla if you're doubling it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my vanilla extract here and put two teaspoons in. And then I'm gonna turn my mixer back on. And then I'm also gonna add two eggs to this mix. So my grandma taught me to crack them in a separate bowl 
I think mostly students can pick out any egg shells that pop in there. I'm going to crack my two eggs into a separate bowl. And then I'm also going to incorporate them in with my other wet ingredients. Now, my grandma told me, Amanda, when you're doing the eggs, you're supposed to crack and then just let them go from up top. The higher, the better. Like is that? that, is that true? Yes, yes. You should do that. <laughs> I would actually like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once that starts to mix up in here, um, the last ingredient you're going to add is a half a teaspoon of salt, which I forgot to grab before we started. Good thing my spices are right there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a half a teaspoon of salt. If you use salted butter, you can definitely skip this step. You might not want to get your cake too, too salty. Um, the balance between sweet and salty is tasty, but I'm not sure you want a super salty cake. So if you use salted butter, if that's all you have on hand, um, go ahead and skip that. If not, go ahead and add the salt. And now we can start adding our dry ingredients. I like to do this about a quarter cup at a time. Um, in some of our test calls, we, we, we had an incident where there was a cloud of powder or powdered sugar that came up and coated everything. I'm sure if you've used the mixer before, you've experienced that. So try not to do that. It's not fun to clean up. Same thing with the hand mixer, Brian. Just add a little bit at a time. Have you said milk yet? No, not milk yet. We're holding off on the milk till the end. Ooh, this is going to gonna be on. a good cake. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to keep adding this in here and letting it incorporate into the wet ingredients. And once we get all of that in there, then we will go ahead and add that three quarter cup of milk. Okay, how you doing? Where are you at? Right wait, 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 you lost me. You lost me. I'm, I'm really <laughs> good at talking about Eagle View technology and how accurate our measurements are. But I am okay. I've got my stuff churned, I believe. I got my eggs mixed up. I got my vanilla okay. stuff in and I got my dry ingredients. What do I need? So get your eggs, put your eggs in with the butter and sugar and vanilla. And mix yeah. that all up. Yep. Scrambled, scrambled eggs. All right, that's something I actually yep. know I can make. So the great thing about this cake is we're starting off with a very simple base. So if you guys want to add any type of flavors or sprinkles or food coloring, um, anything to make it a little more fun or tasty, it's the perfect base to add any flavor to. Okay, awesome. And so, Brian, you're going to incorporate those dry ingredients. Again, you'll want to incorporate them slowly. Slow and steady wins the race when you're mixing dry ingredients with wet ingredients and baking. Yes, awesome. So did we have anyone guess how many layers that cake was? Let's see. Let me take a look at that while I'm doing this. And we have... Okay, let's see. Three layers, two layers, seven layers. And then, single... yes, it is like cookies. Someone asked if it was creamy butter and sugar like cookies. Exactly like that. You know, and what's interesting is that we were looking at that uh, particular picture in a straight down view. And that's really something that's, um, you know, when we came into the business about 20 years ago, Amanda, with uh, our aerial imagery, you know, that the ortho was your traditional, but that was somebody that was typically looking in a straight down view of a property. And really what uh, Eagle View had pioneered is that oblique imagery, but being able to accurately measure on it. 
And we've been doing this for the past 20 years and actually helping government, you know, be more efficient in what they do. Uh, for example, the county assessor no longer has to send out appraisers each and every time to measure uh, a building in order to do appraisal. They're able to use, uh, utilize our technology and apply that to millions of parcels. And you talk about it just from a government standpoint, just some of the large efficiencies and cost savings associated with that. Absolutely, Brian. I think um, not to always bring this back to Kate, but um, us being able to be innovative and do a virtual baking session like this to still bring the GIS, take the GIS day, um, is very similar to people being able to use the Eagle View technology um, from home when they're in a virtual environment or working remotely. So very, very awesome. Um, now, once you guys get all those dry ingredients mixed in, if I can get my mixer off of here, the batter is going to look kind of thick. So if you can see it here, um, obviously it's a little too thick for a cake. It's not going to go in your pan very well. So this is where we're going to add that three quarter cup of milk. I'll get my mixer back up. And again, this you're going to want to add fairly slowly too, or it's going to splash back up and attack you. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it in my half cup here and turn my mixer on and then just shove all that in there. And then I'm going to see and just do half of my half cup because that's a quarter right. <laughs> I'm not being very accurate, so. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I went MIA over here, Amanda, as far as quiet, but uh, this stuff started to look like Play-Doh gone wrong. Uh, but I'm going <laughs> to stick with it. it I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> it's going to taste delicious. So, I'm going to let that mix up a little bit here. Um, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we grease our pan. So that's really important because if you don't grease the pan, you're never, ever going to get that cake back out of there in one piece. So um, I use just avocado oil. You want to use a neutral tasting oil or your cake is going to absorb the flavor. Um, I just generously put some in the bottom of my pan and then take a good old paper towel and wipe it around, just making sure I'm coating the edges and all the sides. If there's some oil left on the bottom, you guys are totally fine. That'll just enhance um, the cake's ability to come out of the pan a little bit easier. So um, now we should have a nice fluffy batter. It's going to look like this, um, so it's not as thick. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and scoop that into my pan here with my spatula. How you doing over there, Brian? I'm, I'm starting to get the milk in, but I, I, I'm doing it slow, but this is probably okay. the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to go slow and have less mass to clean up. Okay. Thanks for the advice. Okay. So I think we're going to make it, guys. I think we're going to get this cake baked in under 25 minutes. Well, not technically baked. It's got to bake for about 30 to 40 minutes, but it can finish up while you're eating lunch. <laughs> so I like to, since the batter is a little thicker, I like to spread it around a little bit just with my spatula. Um, you can tap your pan on a table like this or shake it around just to get the cake kind of smooth and level in there. Now you can see, well, it's going to fall out if I tip it. But <laughs> you can see I have a pretty level cake. It's sliding around quite a bit because of the oil in the bottom, but that's good because that means it's going to come out pretty easy. And then um, all I'm going to do here is go ahead and pop it in my oven. So mine took about 35 minutes to cook. The recipe says anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes. So you're going to want to make sure that if you stick a knife or toothpick in the middle of it, that um, it comes out clean. 
You can also tell too, if you touch the middle of it and it bounces back, it's kind of firm, um, it means the cake is cooked. If either of those things aren't true, then you should leave your cake in for a little bit longer so you don't have um, mushy cake in the middle. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven. And then I wanna take you guys through some frosting just real quick. Um, it's one of those things that you just kind of have to work with to make sure you get the right consistency. Um, how you doing over there, Brian? I have one quick question. I'm ready to go to the frosting too. How much milk? Yeah, three quarter cup of milk. All right, perfect. Three quarter. And, and if you're milk, doubling, so we're good to go. one and a half cup. So. Nope, not doubling a day. All right, not I'm following doubling. you. No. Keep going. Okay, perfect. So butter, or sorry, frosting. We're gonna want to do butter, confectioner sugar, and then a little bit of vanilla, and then we will use milk to thin it out. Um, so again, I like to use a mixer, but I like to use this particular mixing attachment because I think it fluffs up, it's, it's for whipping, and so it fluffs up the frosting a little better. So, a little of that cake batter because I only have one bowl to my mixer. Get that out of there. Give it a little wipe out. Okay. So you can actually take the time to wash her. <laughs> I just wiped it out in interest of time. Um, and so we want to go ahead and put our stick of butter in here. And then you should do about a teaspoon of vanilla. So we can do the teaspoon of vanilla. You can do more or less if you like a different flavor to it. Um, you can also add cocoa powder if you like chocolate frosting. We did that this weekend and it turned out really delicious. Um, and you can pretty much add caramel flavoring, anything here you want. This is just a basic buttercream frosting. Oh, that batter looks nice, Brian. Okay, so um, I start off with just a little bit of powdered sugar in here, and then I put about, oops, sorry, I put about a tablespoon of milk to start. And so the one thing with frosting to keep in mind is that if your frosting becomes too thick, you can always add more milk. And then if you have too much milk, you add more confectioner sugar. So it kind of works back and forth like that. Um, and then you just mix it up and just add it very slowly. Again, any dry ingredients into your wet ingredients, you're gonna wanna add slowly. And I think We're doing pretty good. Let me just double check and make sure there are no more questions on the baking. And Brian, I didn't know if you wanted to do as much chocolate as possible. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> so um, Brian, I didn't know if you wanted to do the big reveal on the, the layer cake so we can actually see. You know, Amanda, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe I should just wait for them to join the uh presentation tomorrow to give the big the big answer of how many layers this is what do you, you think could. you could <laughs> should i just keep the suspense going no so let's let's do that but uh, again you know one of my main points of showing that is is just to really relate uh how it relates to our technology and which hasn't you know become stale for 20 years now it's, it's very relevant within the government space in addition to some other verticals that are really changing and transforming the way that they have done business for the past 50 years, Amanda. Um, and it's through this technology, but really, you know, the key there was to not only be able to see something from a straight down view, uh, but you're also able to see it at a 45 degree angle, which here, if you're looking at this cake now, you can clearly tell me how many layers that is. So what is it? One, two, three layer cake? Yeah. So yep. again, by being, a, being able to see that particular angle of, let's just say for a, a structure, for example, um, 
and being able to look at it from a planning or permitting or zoning or 911, anything along those lines in government sector, having those side views of a structure is just as important, if not more important than having just that straight down view. So um, I'm hoping uh, that folks tune in tomorrow to learn a little bit more on how we actually use it within the different government uh, departments. Absolutely, and Brian, on that picture. Oh, thanks. We are almost there. So um, in your picture too, I just wanted to point out, um, you can notice that the different layers are cream and there's strawberries within the different layer because we are looking at it from a different perspective. Again, things that we didn't know for certain um, looking at it from the top down view. And uh, just to kind of stay on that too, Amanda, is the amount of detail that you're able to see. You know, years ago, when the resolution wasn't as good as what we're capturing with our new reveal imagery, which is uh, sub three inch imagery, you're able to see this sort of detail when you're looking at structures in order to make those decisions from your desktop. And wow, look at that cake. No more talking about <laughs> Eagle View. That is amazing. Martha Stewart magic. <laughs> so there we go. Nice. So then you can decorate <laughs> and you're done. Well, let me show you what I got. <laughs> that was just, awesome. <laughs> let me see. Let me turn this off real quick. I just popped it out of my oven, um, and it turned out amazing. Can you see that? I can. That's awesome, That Brian. is a beautiful cake, although I, I'm not a judge for the cake contest, and I don't know if you're entering, but I think... If I were a judge, Amanda probably has an edge on you there, Brian. <laughs> no offense. All right. I'll, you know what? If I'm going to lose to anybody, it's going to be Amanda. She does an amazing <laughs> job, not only on this session, but she does an amazing job for Eagle View and, and helps us uh, get our technology out to you guys. So awesome job, Amanda. I'm looking forward to seeing how my cake turns out. Yes. And guys, the cake, the recipe, the first time I baked it, they blew me away. They're really, really tasty. So have fun with them, and I can't wait to see everybody's take um, tomorrow at the end of the day. See you at the presentation Thank you tomorrow. Guys. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you both, Amanda and Brian. That was a really nice little break uh, for our GIS cake. Um, for those who've attended in the past, as you know, we've always had the cake in person and you could taste it. But uh, this time we're trying something a little different in the virtual realm. 